Hi, my name is Vikas Sohal. My laboratory is interested in how patterns of prefrontal activity contribute to cognition. We're particularly interested in gamma oscillations, which are generated by fast spiking parvalbumin interneurons. These oscillations are often observed during cognitive tasks, but we don't know whether they actually contribute to those tasks or whether they're simply an epiphenomenon. This is a key issue in the context of disorders such as schizophrenia, because we know that in these disorders, both parvalbumin interneurons and gamma oscillations are abnormal. So now, let me hand you off to Kathleen Cho, a postdoc in my laboratory and lead author of this study, who will tell you about experiments we've done to explore these questions and relationships. To address these questions, we decided to study mice with a primary deficit in interneuron development to see what the consequences are for gamma oscillations and cognition. We studied DLX56 heterozygous mice from the lab of our collaborator, John Rubenstein. DLX5 and DLX6 are transcription factors that regulate cortical interneuron development. Specifically, deleting DLX5 and DLX6 reduces the number of parvalbumin interneurons while sparing interneurons belonging to other classes. Therefore, we hypothesized that the DLX56 heterozygous mice may exhibit functional abnormalities predominantly in fast spiking interneurons, similar to findings from patients with schizophrenia. To examine fast spiking interneurons, we performed whole cell patch clamp recordings and found that the intrinsic properties of fast spiking interneurons in the prefrontal cortex are abnormal in DLX56 het mice compared to wild type littermates. The intrinsic properties of other classes of cells, such as pyramidal and non fast spiking interneurons, were relatively unaffected. These deficits were also age dependent, only becoming apparent in early adulthood. Therefore, the next question was, do abnormalities in fast spiking interneuron properties accompany cognitive endophenotypes of schizophrenia? Deficits in prefrontal dependent cognitive flexibility are hallmarks of executive dysfunction in schizophrenia. We assess cognitive flexibility using a task in which a mouse learns to associate a food reward with either an odor or a digging medium. This portion of the task is known as initial association. Here, the mouse is presented with two bowls, one with odor 1 and texture A, and the other with odor 2 and texture B. The rule here is that a food reward is associated with odor 1. Once the mouse has learned the initial association between food reward and a specific stimulus, the type of stimulus that predicts reward changes. For example, now it is texture A, and this new rule must be learned. This portion of the task is called a rule shift. While both groups of mice were able to learn the initial association in a similar number of trials, the DLX56 heterozygous mice were specifically impaired on the rule shifting portion of the task. Consistent with the appearance of post-adolescent fast spiking interneuron abnormalities, these deficits in rule shifting only occurred in young adults, but not in seven week old mice. Now, is abnormal fast spiking interneuron development also associated with abnormal gamma oscillations seen in schizophrenia? To answer this, we recorded intracranial prefrontal EEG activity during the cognitive flexibility task and found that this task normally recruits big increases in gamma oscillations. These task evoked gamma oscillations were deficient in DLX56 head mice. The DLX56 head mice also exhibited elevated gamma oscillations at baseline matching the complex patterns of changes in gamma oscillations that are observed in schizophrenia. So to confirm that abnormal prefrontal interneurons cause cognitive inflexibility, we wanted to recapitulate these deficits in control mice by optogenetically inhibiting these neurons. We used DLX I want to be Cre mice, which specifically expresses Cre in GABAergic interneurons, and injected Cre-dependent virus encoding the light-activated proton pump into the prefrontal cortex to inhibit prefrontal interneurons. Optogenetic inhibition during the rule shifting portion of the task caused cognitive inflexibility, confirming two things, that the rule shift depends on the prefrontal cortex and specifically on prefrontal interneurons. Now, knowing that decreased task evoked gamma oscillations accompany cognitive inflexibility, we wanted to test whether specifically inducing gamma frequency activity in prefrontal interneurons could enhance cognition. 
Therefore, we made a virus that targets only interneurons using the DLX I want to be promoter to express channel rhodopsin. Since it had been previously shown that driving fast spiking interneurons at 40 Hz specifically increases gamma oscillations, we wanted to test the effects of stimulating prefrontal interneurons at 40 Hz during the rule shifting portion of the task. Optogenetic stimulation completely normalized rule shifting in our DLX56 head mice. This effect is frequency specific as delivering the same amount of stimulation using a combination of higher and lower stimulation frequencies failed to improve cognition, even partially. These procognitive effects were also persistent following optogenetic stimulation of prefrontal interneurons if you waited a week and then tested the mice on a new rule shift, then, even without delivering additional stimulation, the mice that had received stimulation the week earlier continued to perform normally. So, to recap, the DLX56 heterozygous mice exhibit prominent deficits in fast spiking interneurons, abnormal gamma oscillations, and cognitive inflexibility as that seen in schizophrenia. Inhibiting prefrontal interneurons is sufficient to reproduce cognitive deficits, whereas optogenetically restoring interneuron-driven gamma oscillations can normalize cognition. We're excited about these findings because they suggest that prefrontal interneuron-driven gamma oscillations can impact cognition, and in fact that enhancing these oscillations may help with the cognitive deficits that are a major issue in schizophrenia. Of course, these findings raise additional questions. For example, why does stimulating a gamma frequency but not at other frequencies seem to enhance cognition. Our lab looks forward to continuing to work on these interesting and important questions.